Welcome to Tech Brothers Dharma. In this video of uh, question and answers of Azure Data Factory, we are going to look into the this question: What is integration runtime in Azure Data Factory, and what are the different types uh, of them, and where you use them? So this is a very important question, actually, and uh, a lot of people will ask you this. Um, so the integration uh, runtime is a compute infrastructure used by the Azure Data Factory. So now we know that uh, uh, once we go right here in uh, Azure Data Factory and we create the pipelines, uh, these pipelines uh, can be used uh, to copy the data between different sources and uh, then to the different destinations. Uh, now this is uh, all on the cloud. Uh, so this is Azure Cloud, right? And now ADF is our ETL tool uh, where we can design these uh, pipelines uh, to extract the data and load. Uh, but under the hood, uh, we need to provide them some computer. These uh, uh, pipelines need some uh, CPU, some memory, it, or, and uh, you know some other resources uh, to make it work. Now, these uh, three different type of uh, resources are available. So the very first thing, uh, if you were taking a look here, that's a definition, okay? It is a computer. So IR is a compute infrastructure used by Azure Data Factory. Now, they have divided this uh, compute in three different ways. First, uh, they call it Azure IR. That means if you are reading the data from cloud and writing the data to the cloud, then you will be using this type of computer. It's called Azure IR. And where you will see that, this is where you're gonna see that. You will go to the manage here and then go to integration runtime. So, and uh, here it uh, tells you, uh, also the definition is here, the integration runtime is the compute infrastructure to provide the following data integration capability across uh, different network environments. Uh, now, here if you go and click new, you are gonna see these uh, different uh, IRs available. Uh, so if you click right there, the very first one we are talking about is the Azure IR. Uses this uh, for running data flows, data movement, external, and pipeline activities in a fully managed serverless compute in Azure. Okay, so as I was saying that in case when your source and everything is gonna be, um, let's say you have this um, sources and then you have these destinations and here you have, uh, these are your sources. So this is a, uh, sources can be anything, uh, let's say Azure, Azure SQL, um, blob storage, files you know sitting there uh, or you have a ADLS uh, type 2 or you are extracting data from uh, maybe AWS uh, S3 bucket or different type of sources uh, which are available on cloud and uh, then you have uh, these uh, destinations there where uh, you are gonna uh, have these uh, destination right there and uh, there you want to also write to the uh, cloud destinations uh, such as uh, Azure SQL again and uh, you know maybe my sql on uh, uh, azure so all these uh, places are where you need uh, to build this uh, pipeline and then write the data that's where uh, you are going to use uh, this uh, uh, computer it's called azure ir okay so we can uh, put uh, all this together and uh, call this uh, this whole thing can be run uh, by a computer called azure ir uh, IR. Now, when so you create the IR, there is some power needed, right? So you tell like how much power is needed. So what we are gonna do here, we are going to right there go and uh, see Azure IR here, and now we are gonna click next, and here is your Azure IR. Now, see right there, it is saying for data flow, you can also define the number of cores that you need. So there are two type of activities are gonna be happening here. There are copy activity, there is for each loop, there is a, um, tons of get metadata and all that. Those are different activities, but there is a, a complete section of data flow that uh, needed to run. So for that part, you need a Spark cluster. And uh, here it is telling you how many cores you can use them so the between is a four plus four starting and that's 256 plus 16 so total 272 cores you can use for that computer uh, if you need to run the data flow and that reads the data from the cloud and write the data to the cloud uh, destination um, and uh, your type is going to be um, azure ir Okay, now let's go back uh, and uh, I have already, there is already auto-resolve integration runtime that always come with it and you see that that's uh, 
4 plus 4 and all that and you can keep using it so azure ir if we go back to our um copy activity and go to settings here you tell uh, this uh, auto integration unit so so this uh, with the auto resolve you know ssis ir we can also define the units here how many units of data integration units you want to use so that's between 2 and 256 that use okay so that's with the azure ir so compute you see that we have dius here that can be used in from on to all the way to 256 uh, uh, for the this uh, Azure IR settings. Uh, and also, if we need to use that same IR for data flow, we have uh, um, eight V cores and all the way to 270 V cores, we can use it. So, this will be happening only for cloud to cloud uh, computing. Uh, sorry, uh, cloud to cloud uh, ETL pipelines. Now, let's go to another scenario where uh, we have a uh, second part of it. Uh, so the IR we are talking is called self-hosted IR. So if you want to perform data integration securely in a private network environment that does have a direct, uh, sorry, that does not have a direct uh, line of sight from the public cloud environment, uh, you can install self-hosted IR in your on-premises environment behind a firewall or inside a virtual private network. Uh, the self-hosted integration runtime only makes the outbound http based connection to the internet now this is a very common scenario uh, where you have this uh, let's say uh, right here um, now if i uh, let me um, bring uh, okay so let, let's say this is our internet right so think about that this is my on-premises uh, um, site you know and the uh, on-premises of uh, what i have uh, this is my on-prem and then uh, i have uh, file setting uh, uh, file setting on my local computers and uh, then uh, then i have a sql server running uh, on uh, and then oracle and db2 and all that so i have tons of uh, these uh, databases and files uh, sitting in my on premises uh, sql or uh, sorry on premises network uh, or uh, in a different network than a uh, cloud network uh, now you need to read all that and then uh, put somewhere in a uh, you know other side of it so in those cases uh, what you need uh, and here let's say you want to move this data to the uh, destination and your destination is uh, uh, destination and here is your destination azure sql db okay or azure blob storage uh, or azure adls uh, gen 2 you know so those type of uh, destinations uh, to make this work uh, what you need uh, you need uh, to get the data from here and then uh, you're gonna go to the right here and here you need uh, the integration or compute type uh, is uh, called self-hosted ir that's what we need so we will download a program and uh, in this case uh, what we do we download our program on our on-premises server maybe one of uh, the computer or maybe uh, use more computers so this can be actually uh, uh, installed as a cluster so there could be four nodes total for self-hosted ir now if we install uh, uh, on our one of the computer here then uh, we will use that uh, self-hosted ir to read the data from our on-premises and then uh, we can load the data to our cloud so that's where we use a self-hosted ir the compute it is going to use as we are installing on the local computers so it is going to use the cpu memory and all that from there and also use some resources from the cloud as well so uh, it is very clear now we have uh, um, two type of uh, IRs first we have discussed the Azure IR where everything you read or write uh, on the cloud second when uh, you have a private network and you need to read from that network uh, to the cloud uh, or you have your on-premises uh, network uh, and you need to read data from uh, those computers or uh, CSV files or uh, data from SQL or Echo and all that uh, that's where you will be using a uh, self-hosted the final is called Azure SSI IR so that's where uh, if you need to run your SSIS packages. Uh, so if we go back right here uh, and uh, go to manage here integration runtime uh, and here uh, go to new, we have these options. Uh, we have discussed the Azure IR. So we already did and we also did the self-hosted. Uh, but in case you need to run SSIS packages uh, and uh, that uh, 
it will create uh, an SSIS uh, compute server with the number of nodes you tell, with the cores you tell, and with the memory you tell. So this, uh, once you tell all that information, it's going to create an SSIS uh, uh, um, computer or a, uh, or, a, or, a, or a computer or multiple computers, you know. So it depends, uh, like, how many cores, how many, you know, uh, CPUs and all you are selecting. So, and also the nodes you can tell, like, how many nodes you want, right? So it's going to create a SSIS server and for you, and it, this is going to be dedicated for you. And whenever you need to run SSIS packages, it's going to use that computer to run your SSIS packages. So you, there are many places that you will deploy your SSIS packages. Maybe you will be deploying your SSIS packages to the Azure SQL DB. Maybe you will be deploying your SSIS packages to the um, your managed instance. Uh, um, that's your SQL managed instance on the cloud. You will be able to deploy your packages there. Uh, so there are uh, you can also deploy your packages in file share. You know Azure Blob Storage and all that. Uh, so packages can be anywhere, and then you call those packages in the ADF. Uh, by using the executor package task and that under the hood is going to use your Azure SSIS IR to run those packages on the ADF so that's what happened so if you go right there let me cancel this and here if I go to the let me go to the pipeline and here we have executor SSIS package so that's where you're going to tell like which IR to use okay once you tell the which IR to use it's going to show you that and then you're going to tell where exactly is the location of your packages that can be SSIS DB on Azure SQL DB or on your managed SQL instance on the cloud and then you can have a file system or you can have uh, maybe you have uh, created Azure VM and you have a place your uh, packages there and you can access them. You have a file system project. You have deployed the entire project on a blob storage. You have embedded packages in the data factory, or you have a store your packages in an MSDB on the package store. So there are a lot of places where you can save these packages and access in the ADF, and they will run with the Azure SSIS IR. Okay. So these are three different uh, type of uh, IRs uh, are available and uh, you will be using uh, them uh, at different uh, uh, scenarios. So when somebody is going to ask you, hey, what is the S A integration runtime? So integration runtime is a compute infrastructure used by Azure Data Factory. Now, depending upon your scenario, how you want to read and write the data and what is your source and what is your destination and that's where it's going to define your are you going to use the azure ir that's the cloud to cloud or you are reading from or writing of back and forth between your private network and cloud so self-hosted ir in that case and in case when you need to run your azure ssis packages in the azure uh, data factory then uh, you will be using Azure SSIS IR so I hope this all the detail you can take the definition from here but uh, putting in very simple general words uh, what you learn uh, from the detailed examples uh, in this video that will help you don't spend uh, the time uh, I spend uh, to explain all that just take like a minute uh, and uh, just go with the quick summary of that and that should uh, take care of the answers Thank you very much and uh, uh, I hope uh, you learned something out of this. Please subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys in the next video.